welcome to another episode of Author Fan Face Off. Yeah! We got one great author, one huge fan. We picked one book and we're going to find out who knows more. I'm Steve Shankin and my co-host is, of course, needless to say, the leaping librarian, Stacey Ratner. Hi. And our author guest today, Natalie Lloyd. Welcome. Hi, thank you. It's good to see you. We're going to do, of course, a snicker of magic. And I don't know, I'm just guessing on this, but when I when I read it recently, reread it, it, it seems to me like the kind of novel you must have thought of for years before you wrote, you know, maybe even grew up thinking about. Is that is that true? I feel like it did, even though, you know, people always ask how long a book takes to write, so they all take different amounts of time. But I feel like that one was a little bit of forever um, all pushed together. So much of it was about the town I grew up in mm. and people I miss, especially grandparents. I think I was a little homesick for my grandparents when I wrote it. So, so yeah, I pulled from a lot of memories on that one. Yeah, that came true. Well, all right. Well, hopefully it's in your memory because I got to warn you, your challenger today is is scary. And uh, in terms of her knowledge, that is. And I'm going <laughs> to let Stacy do the intro there. I am thrilled to meet Katie in person because back um, in May, she wrote to me and said that she would like to be on the show with her favorite book of all time, uh, Snicker of Magic, because she has read it probably, I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration, a hundred times. And anytime she needs to be cheered up, Katie picks it up. So um, it's just amazing. I was happy to see send her an email finally and say, great news, Natalie's in. And um, and here we are happening today. So welcome, Katie. Good luck, Natalie. Oh, thank I you. I will need it. <laughs> yes, good luck. We're going to jump right into questions. So here we go, Katie, one for you. Felicity and her, and her mom and sister arrive at Midnight Gulch in a van they call this. The pickled jalapeno. Yes, very good. And Natalie... In school, Miss Lawson tells the class that the prize for winning the Stoneberry Duel is this. What's the prize? Oh my gosh, is it, is it? I can't believe I'm blanking. And this is the first one. Is it like a lifetime supply of ice cream? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. a supply Ish. of ice cream and a certain amount of money. <laughs> There's a certain amount like, of money like, there. Was it like 25 bucks <laughs> or up? 50? Am I close? Katie? Can you help me what out? Do you say, Katie? Um, I believe it was a hundred dollars cash money and a year's supply of Dr. Duke's ice cream. Katie. Oh, well, we didn't need Katie the exact sentence, but it. that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. But we warned you. We did warn you. <laughs> I feel like it's a great honor to lose at Author Fan Face Off. For oh, the author. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I've done it myself and I was on it so. <laughs> okay. Good to know. So, all right, back to uh, Katie. When Jonah invites Felicity to their first meeting, he tells her to use this code word. Mm, pumpernickel. Yeah. Yay, Katie. <laughs> all right, this I think is hard, Natalie. Felicity collects words and Aunt Cleo collects these. Um, porcupines. Hedgehogs. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I sure know. went out for a minute there. No, Hedgehogs, yeah. I promise yeah. I did write this book. So. <laughs> These are tough. These questions are hard. I mean, you wouldn't know it from Katie, but all right. Speaking of ice cream, Katie, Dr. Zook's Blackberry Sunrise ice cream has this special power. Um, it can make you remember things. Yeah, exactly. All right, Natalie. Maybe this was based oh, on a okay. true a true experience or not. If a student is about to puke on the bus, the driver, Dave Grissom, passes this back to them. It's the LaBarf bucket. Yes. I remember that one. <laughs> From your Thankfully, school bus days? Or... <laughs> based on a true experience. I just thought it sounded funny. But... <laughs> That's good. My mom was reading me that book. Um, I remember that was my favorite page and still is to this day. Oh, I love it. You know, it's funny because one of my favorite lines in the book is right around there. It's when Felicity's talking to Dave Grissom for the first time and she realizes he has like donut chunks in his beard. And, oh, yeah. and she says, um, a beard is a gnarly place for a pastry to reside. I, I, mean, I, I was looking through the book right before this started and I remember seeing that line. 
Oh, cool. All right. Katie, when Felicity first meets Oliver, he has a tattoo of this animal on his arm. It's a dove. Yep. <laughs> and she oh. doesn't even have to think about yeah. it. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Natalie, uh, what instrument did each of the brothers threadbare play? Oh, they played a guitar and a banjo. Can you say who, which one played which? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me try to remember. Uh oh. All right. Stone. Let's see. Stone. I'm going to say Stone did the guitar. Barry did the banjo. You got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're redeeming yourself. <laughs> no, that was a hard there. one. That was hard. That was based on my favorite band, by the way. They're called the Avit Brothers. And, um, you know, they really are two brothers who play a guitar and a banjo. And I remember many years ago in the before times when concerts were going on and all that, um, I went to see them live. And actually, I don't know if you've experienced this. I love concerts anyway. I love music. But the whole environment seemed to shift when, when they came out on stage and I heard the music and people were dancing and singing and having so much fun. So I think that's what got the ball rolling for a snicker of magic to start with was just oh. how much fun I had at that show. But. Oh, wow. All right. Well, we always save these hard ones for last. Usually the things that come up once. And I think that's true <laughs> of, of round five here. So Katie, Jonah admits to being afraid of one thing, only one thing. What is it? I remember this because it's exactly the same as me. Clowns. <laughs> That's right. Same, Katie. Same. And not Stanley. Autobiographical. <laughs> no, I don't like painted smiles. That freaks me out. So right, that's what he singled out as the. Um, yes, the exactly. Oh, they're so scary. Couldn't accept. And Natalie, Felicity says she says this is the only word that she's found with a flavor to it. I'm drawing a complete blank. Um, Second. Let me think. The only word she found Katie, do you know it? Um, I believe. I'm not 100% certain. <laughs> I believe she said it was the word love. <laughs> Katie, okay. you're amazing. Congratulations. Wow. We, oh, we, we, so, it makes me so happy that you like the book that much. That you I know. That I, I love this book so much. Oh, good, good. Is that your copy behind you there? Yes, it is falling apart. Oh my gosh. Beautiful sight. I right? love it. Author fan face off, you will know more. Author fan face off, where can you go? Just one question. Do you, I oh. like to write some stories myself. Do you have any tips? Oh, I love that you're a writer. I wondered if you were. Um, I, had, I had a suspicion. So the thing I always tell people who love to write is one, to read books you love, which you're obviously doing because you know them better than the people who write them. And when you read a book you love, think about what you love about it. If there is a sentence you love, stop and look at it again and think about what it is that makes it so special that, that you felt like you were in the place or like you like the chocolate orange switcher, you like the sensory details and think about how you could write those in your own writing which goes to the second thing. And that's just to keep writing, write and write. You know, I remember telling one of my favorite teachers I wanted to be a writer and I didn't really think it was possible. My favorite writers were like Anne and Martin and Roald Dahl. And I thought, okay, writers probably live in castles and fields somewhere. And they have these very exciting lives. And I grew up beside a cow field in the middle of nowhere. So I, I didn't think it was possible, but he told me if I kept reading and kept writing, I could do it. That's what every writer does. I keep reading and keep writing. So keep writing what you love. Um, be brave enough to share it with people. Even at first, it might just be a parent or um, a teacher or your best friend to keep sharing it. Try out lots of different things um, and see what feels best. And you're going to get better and better as you go. And then someday I want a signed book from you. So I don't send you me. one if, this, if it goes well. <laughs> okay, good. I can't wait for it. 